There comes a time in every person's life when you realise it's not about doing what you are told, but doing what you know is right for you. Let us take a journey of learning and discovery with the world's most successful people who are living the life of their dreams, walking through life using their inner wisdom and being of service to others. Forget exams, grades and test scores. What is your purpose? As we let go of what we think should be and learn from our elders to gain knowledge, inspiration and a true sense of who we are. What are your dreams? Does your life have meaning? Are you living a life of significance? Let's talk with today's guest. Hello, this is Mark Taylor and welcome as we spend some more time together on the Learning on Fire podcast. Today, it's me just chatting through some of my takeaways, some of my thoughts, some of my my insights, I guess, really, in, in terms of, of the things that I've picked up as we've been through what what is now 10 interviews with people. And, and what I've really, really loved about the whole experience is that while everyone's journey has been different, there has been some common things which have come through. I think most notably is the fact that all of these people that I've interviewed, they have found a passion, they found something in themselves which they knew was an integral part of their life. They wanted to take part in something, whether it's Paul Philbert being a musician, he knew that there was something about playing the timpani which made him be able to speak to the world in a way that he hadn't found before. You know, Mark Green, who managed to have a career in marketing you know and actually having a, an understanding of, of, a, of a, an actual more corporate idea world but a passion for cars and then when the two of these things came together he was able to then really live life on his terms because he was combining the two things together so it's not always necessarily that you have a passion that you're that you feel like you have to do and it's a very direct one it can be slightly one step removed Mark managed to have a life where he could drive cars that he could do that and also at the same time use the, the skills that he learned at university and college. Um, whereas now, of course, while he's interviewing on the the, um, the Cars Yeah podcast, um, he's getting to do it in a slightly different way by interviewing people who've, who've found their passion and their career within using cars and motorbikes and all the things that he does on his podcast. So he's managed to morph, really, the, the way that he lives his life, but still focusing on the things which he loves. I mean, there was some great advice from people. I mean, there's one thing that Kate Erickson said, um, which I thought was really interesting, which was that kind of, when I asked her about her future, it's that kind of really your future's made today. The decisions you make today, the things you put in place today, the little things you do every day all mount up to what your future will look like. Um, and that's been quite important for me, just sort of listening and just thinking about everything that I do every day. You know, is this actually benefiting me for the future? Is it benefiting me today? And is it putting something in place which I think will really be helpful and help me achieve what I want to achieve, but also give me today what it is that I'd like to happen today. And and whatever that happens to be, whether it's exercising, whether it's the way you live your lifestyle, whether it's putting time into something that you're passionate about, you know, are you doing it today or are you putting it off for the future? And I think that's a really key question to ask yourself as you as you go through. The other thing which I found very, very interesting, which has come through a couple of times, but certainly when I was chatting to Rick Clemens, was the idea of time, you know, the fact that we talk about, you know, creating your life and putting things in place so that you can live life on your terms. But also there's, you know, life has seasons, there's a time and a place for these things. You know, he talked about having been married, um, had um, a couple of children, and his job was in hospitality. And then, you know, a really big life change, you know, moving across the country, you know, um, separating from his wife and and the counselling that he talked about. And, you know, I mean, all these things are really, really important, but he sort of felt that, you know, the work he was doing in schools and the coaching that he's doing now, without having lived that part of his life earlier on, he wouldn't be in a, posi- in a position to do that now. Um, and that's really, really, I think it's a really, really important thing to realise that all these things have seasons. Some of the experience you have, even if you think that they're not supporting you or they're not positive, actually can be the key things which give you some kind of enlightenment, some kind of understanding later on. And actually, it's just making sure that throughout everything that you're doing, you're grateful, which takes us obviously to, to George and Benton's interview, you know, through the Gratitude podcast. You know, what is it that you can be grateful today, no matter what's going on in your life? There's something that's happening today which can really support you. And a lot of these little things all put together round up to be a really, really big difference. I love some of the things that Mark Mark Wade said, um, especially when he was talking about his children, you know, the idea that actually in school 
you know, going to the teachers and saying, this is what I'm trying to achieve. This is what I'd like to do. I'd like you to be on my team. I'd like you to support me to help me get where I'd like to go. Rather than being passive and just accepting what people say, actually being proactive and talking to people and saying, this is what I'm about. This is what I'd like to do. These are my dreams. Um, and, and, I, and I think that's really powerful. I think lots of people really don't think they can do that. But, you know, that was a, a real sort of shining example of actually, you know, creating the life that you want just by actually being honest and being out there and having an idea. As well as that, if you don't have a desire, if you don't have a real passion for something you want to do this minute, we talked about, you know, do you know what you don't like to do? Um, You know, if you were in a magazine store, you know, what's the magazines you go to look? If you actually, what is it that you think, I do like photography or I do like sport, but I don't like fishing or whatever it happens to be, you know, Take away the things you know you don't like to do and just gradually filter down into the, some of the things that you do. And then just go with it. If it speaks to you, if you think, oh, I'd like to try this, just give it a go. You know, that sort of breadth of just experiencing things will get you out there. It will make you meet people and, and, and your life then unfolds. I think if you look at it like a dialogue and, and an unfolding of things happening, I think that really just gives you a sense of, of um, I don't know, just allowing life to be as it actually is, which I, I think is important. When we chatted to Jade from Steam School, you know, it was that sort of sense that, you know, some of the jobs that she had and some of the opportunities she had came sort of slightly left field. They weren't exactly what she thought they were going to be. But actually from that, she sort of learned about working in schools and then her understanding of the fact she wanted her life to be different and that she wanted a little bit more control and do things on her own terms. Um, and she was able to put that in place, partly because that's what she felt she wanted to do, but also she knew the difference around it and she wanted it to be um, slightly different and and she was able to put that into place. When I chatted to I about um, the classroom without walls and sort of using technology to to reimagine education, what I loved about our conversation was the fact that she was talking about identifying with people, which was important to her. You know, she talked about being born in China and then moving to the US and now currently being Korea and and, and, and just lots and lots of moving around but just that sense of finding someone that you identify with she talked about going to a lecture which actually wasn't part of what she was studying but she identified with the lecture and, and actually felt that they were sort of talking her language and speaking her language so just sort of finding what it is that talks to you what it is that speaks to you in a way that encourages you to do something and I think one of the big things that came through that interview as well as some of the others is the fact that a lot of these things they don't come by being external they don't come by chasing after something they come from giving enough time and space into your life to look inwardly to actually just think actually I just need to spend some time with this what is it that I feel about this is it a positive thing is it a negative thing is it something I really want to do and actually it's only then that you can really hear that sort of an innate understanding of of essentially who you are and living the life that you want to live because inside it tells you inside you have all the answers but you do need the space and time and understanding in order to be able to get there. So I do encourage everybody that's um, listening to these things, if you're sort of a little bit, oh, I'm not quite sure where I want to go or what I want to do, actually just take the foot off the gas a little bit. Just spend some time with yourself and just allow everything just to be. And out of that space, normally things come to you. It might be an answer. It might be an opportunity that comes slightly left field to you. It might just be a kind of, actually, I've now got the energy to do something like this, which I didn't have before, because your brain is just not swimming with a million things that you're currently involved in, especially if you're still within the school system. You know, there's lots of do this, do that. It has to be like this. It has to be like that. Actually, you're in control of that. You know, take a few things away out of your life to give yourself a bit more time. You know, make sure that you're looking after yourself and eating well and, and being active and, and just allow you know your body to tell you exactly what it is that it needs and how you can best do that. And I think some of the answers will then come come forward for you. So I really hope that you've enjoyed um, listening to all these people and I'll be really interested to hear back from you if there's anything you'd like to share in terms of what you've got out of it. And remember, everyone in these interviews has actually been able to share some of their favorite resources things which have made a big difference to their life so as i said go to educationonfire.com um, click on the podcast episodes and on the learning on fire drop down are all the resources of all the interviews that we've done so far so as I said I just wanted to come on I just wanted to say hello I just wanted to say thank you for listening I just wanted to be able to just 
share some of these takeaways, some of these common things which I've felt have come through, which have been so important to everybody. And that's also not forgetting, of course, the fantastic guests that have very kindly come on and shared their journey. I mean, people like Jonathan, who, you know, have just taken us through an entire life story of obviously having a very difficult childhood, some of the things that he learned, some of the things that he felt. And as a result of his experiences, you know, he's created this amazing community um, around Trivial Warfare and his amazing podcast. Um, And, you know, life can be that different from having almost no friends as he was talking about before to actually then enabling us um, enabling him rather to be able to to create a community which is um, life affirming for so many people Um, and and I think that journey that understanding is is such a key thing so whether your passion is software like Hannah who was talking to us about being a softwarepreneur um, or whether it's um, entertaining it's a podcast whether it's cars whatever it happens to be follow that dream follow that passion Um, And I look forward to, to sharing with you some amazing guests which are coming up in the next few weeks. Thanks so much for listening and we will chat again soon. Thanks for listening to the Learning on Fire podcast. For more information, please visit educationonfire.com and follow the links from the homepage. This show is sponsored by the National Association for Primary Education. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire.